Hello and welcome back for another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. Again, I'm Ron with Ideal and again welcome to my shop. Now in this segment we're going to cover why do you use cable TV termination caps on the ends of your outlets and your splitters if you're not using those outlets uh, today where we've never used these in the past. So um, the reason we're using termination caps today and why they're highly recommended and never have been in the past is because the cable companies are using higher and higher and higher frequencies. If you refer back to my basis of cable TV and uh, cable TV splitter loss uh, uh, videos on, on the channel, you'll see references to the fact that the cable companies are going all the way out to one gigahertz in frequency. And we also stated in those videos that the higher frequencies, the more the loss is associated with those channels. So those high frequency channels, by the time they get to an outlet in a room, since they are such a high frequency, they are actually weaker in strength than the lower frequency channels. And you know what? They're more susceptible to noise and interference problems. So one way we can help uh, fix and help those channels is by eliminating and using what we call, I should say, termination caps. Now, a termination cap is a very simplistic thing. It screws at, on the uh, unused port uh, on a splitter, if you happen to have a port here you're not using, or if there's an outlet in the room and the wire from here goes out to that outlet, but you're not using that outlet in the room, we'd ask you to cap it again with a termination cap. And these are uh, little metal, uh, uh, again, what we call termination caps, not much to them, uh, that screw up to the end of the uh, outlet or, or the uh, port on the splitter. And they're not dust covers. They're, they're actually called termination caps. And now, why do we use these? Well, again, we're using you know, those higher frequency channels. And again, they're more susceptible to noise and interference. So say I have um, a signal coming in a home from the cable company. And that probably will go through some form of a splitter um, out to different outlets in a house. And say one of these goes out and hits an outlet in a room right there. The standards today uh, would recommend to us that if we are not using the outlet in the room, that we go out and purchase what's referred to as a termination cap. And we put it there if we're not using the outlet in the room. And these other ports on the splitter, if we're not using those, we'd go ahead and, and again put termination caps on the end of this. Now, the reasons we're doing this are several, but uh, one is that you should understand that all wires in your home basically are antennas. And uh, this frequency range, this 5 to 1 gigahertz in frequency, is the same frequency range that over-the-air broadcast companies use. You know, your, your AM and FM frequencies are in their ranges, too. So if, say, I could pick up stray frequencies out of the air, and uh, say you are living right down the street from the radio station or that, that TV station, again, it's broadcasting lots of RF into the air, we can pick up a signal out of the air here and pick up what we call multipathing, where we get signals from, you know, two different directions that we don't like. Another problem with this is if I'm sitting here with just a simple vacuum cleaner, and you probably understand that any electrical device puts out a magnetic field that interrupts other things around it, this magnetic field can get crossed into this wire and get induced into the system as well um, and cause, again, signaling problems. That's a, a problem for us. And then the other big reason that we do this is that my signal that I want is traveling down this piece of coax to the outlet in the, in the room. And um, coax is referred to as a 75 ohm cable. That means the TV, the set-top box, uh, the Blu-ray player, uh, it's all built to be around 75 ohms. So as a signal passes through that system, it sees one level playing field. And this is why we tell you don't kink the cable, don't bend the cable, don't damage the connectors, because that changes this whole 75 ohms, which more, more or less acts like a bump of the road. And most of the signal will get to it where it's got to go, but some gets reflected back at us. And when we look at this, we're going down a 75 ohm highway, and if we hit an open connection, uh, an open connection is an infinite amount of resistance, and so it's a, basically a brick wall. And if you remember your high school physics, uh, this energy just doesn't disappear, it's got to go someplace. And it's very similar to me taking a tennis ball and throwing it at the wall over here. And when the tennis ball hits the wall, does the ball simply slide to the floor? or where does the energy in that ball end up going? Well, of course, it obviously reflects back at you. And that's what happens here. We get a reflected energy coming back at us. And the signal coming back at us is equal to and out of phase with that incoming signal and works its all way, all the way back into our system. And this causes ghosting and distortion problems we'd like to eliminate, especially problems for the high-end channels because those are the weakest at the outlet. 
So how do we cure the problem? Well, we take uh, and put a termination cap on the end of the wire. Now this is actually a very simplistic thing. It's a little hex cap that screws on the end of it. And you'll see kind of a, a, a point on the end of it. And inside of the termination cap is actually a 75 ohm resistor is all it is. And it, it takes a resistor, 75 ohms, and puts it across the center conductor and the shielding or the second conductor in the cable is that shielding. So, so the braid and the foil. So it puts a 75 ohm load across the connection is basically what it does. Now, the little resistor inside the termination cap will take this energy traveling down this cable and actually absorb it and dissipate it in the form of heat. Now, it won't get hot to the touch because uh, it, these, these systems are very low power systems, but that's exactly what it does. Now, matter of fact, the termination cap is referred to as a dummy load because it basically makes it think you plugged a TV or, a, again, a Blu-ray player or a set-top box or something like that into the outlet in the room because, again, all these things are 75 ohm loads as well. So, that is why we use termination caps uh, today and we never used them in the past. And um, thank you for coming to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Wires. Again, I'm Ron with Ideal and uh, we'll see you next time.